Pronunciation Pro. Pronunciation Pro. Hello again, and welcome to the Pronunciation Pro podcast. I'm Annie Rudin, and today we are going to dive into something that makes a huge difference in how easily someone can understand you, especially native English speakers, because it has such an effect on the rhythm of American English. When you speak American English with a similar rhythm that native speakers are used to hearing, it makes it really easy for the listener and it makes it flow a lot better for them. It's predictable. It just, it, it causes a lot of, a lot less friction when you're using the correct rhythm of American English. So what do I mean by rhythm? So rhythm is word stress, sentence stress, intonation, the way you link and pause, the pace that you're using, all of these combined make up the rhythm of American English. So you really have the sounds of American English and the rhythm of American English that need to be need to be aligned with how native English speakers use them. And when you do, then you sound more like a native English speaker, but more importantly, you're understood better by native English speakers. And English speakers are you know, all over the place. It's more of a standard American English accent that we're, we're teaching. And that's what's most commonly used on TV or a lot of the media that you might consume in English is most likely done in a standard American English accent. All right. So today I'm actually going to get a little technical with word stress. And we're going to go through five of the basic word stress rules. These are rules and things that come up very frequently in American English. So when you understand these five rules, you're going to be so much better at using correct word stress. Now I'm doing this today because I, you know, I have been working with my clients at Pronunciation Pro and I've had a few students working on word stress lately, and I've, I, we've been doing some training together on word stress. And it just is, has been emphasized to me how important word stress is to how clear you're able to be understood. Now, the, the languages that I hear that have the biggest problem with word stress are um, French speakers Italian speakers. I'm trying to think what else. Usually those are the the most difficult because with French and Italian, um, a lot of words are similar, and but the stress is different. And so if you have, you know, a similar word in your native language, but it's stress different, that can really be hard to adjust. I also find it with a lot of my Indian speakers because, you know, so many of uh, our Indian clients, they, they're speaking English their whole life, but there's a different accent. There's a different stress pattern for a lot of the words. And so it's a very difficult, uh, very, you know, challenging thing to shift that word stress when it's something that you've used your whole life. Challenging and it takes practice, but it is possible. I wouldn't be here if it weren't possible. So we're going to go through it in a very systematic way because when you understand the rules and you have tuned your ear to how word stress works, it makes you so much more successful and it makes you be able to, to shift it so much faster. So what we're going to do is, you know, you may be listening just on the podcast. If you want some visuals, go over to the YouTube, to Pronunciation Pro on YouTube, because I'm going to share some visuals, but it might be that, you know, it might be that you just want to listen and kind of get that information auditorily, and that's just fine. Okay, so what we're doing with word stress is I'm going to first explain a little bit more about what I mean by word stress and how we identify word stress. And then we're going to get into some listening exercises. 
around word stress so that you can tune your ear to it. And then we're going to go into the five basic rules of, of word stress of how do you know the basic rules really cover like the question, how do you know which syllable to stress? And that's really important because there is a right and a wrong way to stress syllables in English. It's not kind of up for interpretation or anything like that. Sentence stress is more about what do you mean by it? What, you know, what word are you going to stress based on the emotional intent? But word stress is a lot more concrete. There is a definite like right and wrong to word stress. So it makes it nice because it's predictable, but you do definitely have to tune your ear to it because there's a lot of crazy rules that come along with word stress and knowing, especially on multisyllabic words, which syllable to stress. But but we're not going to go around just memorizing a bunch of rules. That that doesn't make sense because you're not going to be able to like pull up that information while you're speaking you know, and there's so many other things that you're concerned about. So what we want to do is help you tune your ear to American English and especially the the word stress right now of American English. And so we're going to get you really familiar with with how to hear word stress in a, in a word and then how to use it. Okay. All right. So let me go into, we really have some incredible worksheets and, and things that go with each of our lessons at Pronunciation Pro. Uh, at Pronunciation Pro, I have, I have videos and I have, you know, all these worksheets and audios and, you know, all these things that, that help you walk through this process step by step. Word stress we teach in module three. It's, the progression is very purposeful in when we address which sounds and which um, rules of American of American rhythm. So very strategic. So I'm kind of jumping into module three here with word stress. So something important to understand is every word in English has at least one syllable. So every word in English can be broken into one or more syllables. And a syllable is a part of wor a word that always involves one vowel sound and sometimes one or more consonants that are around it, okay? So syllables are a way that we break apart words into pieces. And every word in English can be broken into one or more syllable. And a syllable is a part of a word that always has a one vowel sound and sometimes one or more consonant sounds around it. Okay, so that's kind of an idea of the syllables because we'll, we'll be talking a lot more about syllables as we move along. So, you know, backing up a little bit, the rhythm is a combination of stressed and unstressed syllables. And that creates kind of the English rhythm. Okay, so there's these, the, the, stressed and unstressed syllable in words that help create this rhythm. When, you know, and, you know, just thinking every, every language has its own unique rhythm or beat. Okay. So what we're doing is we're trying to understand more of the English rhythm. All right. So for example, here are some examples of one syllable words. So work, day, go, night. Okay. Two syllable words, again, enter, danger, today, okay? So each syllable has one vowel sound. There might be multiple letters, but the sound. So like again, gen, eh, eh, is our vowel, but it's spelled with an A-I, okay? So that's the difference there. So three syllable words, computer estimate, photograph, okay? And then four and five syllables. So you kind of get the idea here is that every word can be broken into one or more syllables. Each syllable has its own vowel sound and sometimes one or more consonants around it. Okay, so a stressed syllable or part of the word is a word that says, 
is said longer, louder, with a higher pitch and full pronunciation of the vowels. Okay, let me repeat that. Okay, the stressed syllable of a word is longer and louder with a higher pitch and the vowel in that syllable gets its full pronunciation. Okay, and I'll, I'll give some examples as we go along, but basically we're gonna get that full vowel pronunciation on the stressed syllable. And the other syllables tend to have a little bit more reduced vowel pronunciation. All right, okay. So let's go ahead and just do a little bit of a listening exercise. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through some words and I am going to say the word and then I want you to identify, is it, you know, which syllable is being stressed? The first, the second, the third, the fourth, you know, which, which syllable is getting stressed? I'm gonna go through a list of 10 words. So one, number one, project, project. Okay, if you said first syllable, you'd be correct, project. That's the way I said it. Now, if I said project, that would be second syllable stress. And that's considered a heteronym word. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay, number two, arrive, arrive, arrive. So this is second syllable stress, okay, arrive. If it were first syllable stress, it would be arrive, okay, so that that vowel in the stress syllable always gets its full pronunciation. So if I was stressing the first syllable, it would be arrive. But since it is second syllable stress, it's arrive. Okay, do you see it went from a to a? Uh, that's a reduced syllable. A reduced syllable or a reduced vowel is typically pronounced as a, uh, a, uh, kind of that schwa, a, uh, a uh sound. Okay. All right. Next one. Holiday. Holiday. That one is first syllable stress. Okay. If I did third syllable stress, it would be holiday, holiday, holiday. Okay. Next one. Discover, discover, discover. So that one is second syllable stress. Discover, discover. Okay, do you hear that? Instead of discover or discover, it's discover, second syllable stress. Okay, next one, economic, economic. So that one has a first, a first and second stress, okay? A primary and a secondary stress. So primary is a, eh, the first syllable, and then third syllable is getting that stress too economics, economics. So that third, thir third syllable stress really gets more of the emphasis than the rest of them. Economic, economic. And I hope you're kind of following along and saying it out loud for yourself because getting your mouth moving is always good practice. It's always kind of a reinforcing that sound that you're hearing. Okay, next one, photography. Photography, which syllable am I stressing? Photography. So that one is going to be second syllable stress. Photography. So if you notice griffy, it's not graphy, it's griffy because I'm reducing that syllable that is not stressed or emphasized. Next one, lipstick, lipstick. Okay, so that one is first syllable stress, lipstick. And that's a, considered a compound noun. We'll talk about that in a minute, but compound noun is always going to be first syllable, first word stress, lipstick. Okay, how about today, today, today? Okay, that's second syllable stress, today, today. If it was first syllable stress, it would be today, today. To, in the, so instead of that, it would be today. Okay, reduce ta today. Okay, graduation, graduation. This one is for first and third syllable stress. So graduation, 
graduation. So third syllable is getting most of that energy. And last one, rainbow, rainbow, okay? Again, compound noun. So in compound nouns, the first word is gonna get the stress, rainbow, rainbow. Okay, so let's go over those five basic rules of word stress. So the first rule is whenever you have a two syllable word, when you have a two syllable word and that word is a noun, you're going to stress the first syllable. Okay, when it's a verb, you're going to stress the second syllable. So for example, we have for nouns, which is gonna be first syllable stress, okay, as a reminder, nouns are going to be like teacher, pencil, language, okay? And then the verbs, two syllable words, verbs, fall on the second syllable. So begin, arrive, select. All right, the second rule is that is for heteronym words. Heteronym words are words that are spelled exactly the same but have two different meanings depending on the way you stress it. Okay, so going back still, the two syllable words, noun and verb, a noun stresses the first syllable, verb stresses the second syllable. So let's talk about some heteronym words. So address, can you give me your address so I can come pick you up, up tonight? Address, address, this is the verb form. I'm going to address the audience during my presentation. Okay, how about this one? Conflict, conflict. Spelled the same, but two different meanings because of the stress. So I don't want to have any conflict on the flight. And this flight conflicts with my calendar. Conflicts with my calendar. Okay. Contest and contest. Contest, contest. Do you hear the difference in that reduced vowel at the beginning? Contest, contest. Okay, we have to shift that stress over. Contrast, contrast. Okay, same thing. We're just shifting that stress. Desert, noun, first syllable stress. Desert, dessert. Okay, dessert. And this is like, I live in the desert because I live in Arizona. And I'm going to desert my friends tonight so that I can go to a movie, okay? Dessert. And it's the same pronunciation as like, I'm going to eat a sugary treat after dinner. Dessert, okay? All right, and then the last one, incline, incline. Incline, incline. Okay, where, which vowel is getting that stress? That's what we're really listening for. All right, third rule. This is for compound nouns. You always stress the first word of a compound noun. So what is a compound noun? It is two or more nouns combined together to form a single noun. So for example, mailbox. Mail and box are two different things, but we put them together and they have a different meaning for it, okay? Mailbox, first word in a compound noun is going to be stressed. Mailbox, blackbird, treehouse, mother-in-law. Okay, see how that, how that happens? A lot of English has first syllable stress. That is the majority of the English words are going to be first, first syllable stress. Okay, rule number four is, has to do with the stress in proper nouns. Okay, if, if it's a word, if it's a two word name, stress the second word, okay? Proper nouns are a one-of-a-kind item, and it's usually spelled with a capital letter because it has some significance, okay? So stress the second word in proper nouns. So New York, San Francisco, Mickey Mouse, okay? And then finally, the last one is acronyms. 
So acronyms are a letter is a letter that is used to represent a longer name. So that's what an acronym is. So for example, FBI, and I should mention that we're going to stress the last letter. Now, I was going through, I was listening to a client today, and she was talking about her daughter going to UCLA, but she did it really fast and kind of slurred it together. And I didn't know, like, I didn't have a ton of context around it to know, like, what exactly she was saying without that clear pronunciation. So I had her stop and do UCLA, get that fuller pronunciation with those letters that will significantly help you sound so much better really fast, okay? FBI, IRS, CPA, UN, okay? Always stress the last letter of those acronyms. And really it's just, you know, native speakers are used to hearing a rhythm, just like native speakers of your language are used to hearing a predictable rhythm. So what we're doing is we're just trying to bring it closer there's kind of this gap between you and the person you're trying to communicate with. And what we're trying to do is bridge that gap a little bit more. We can't control what other people are going to do or not do to try and understand you, but you have the power if, within yourself to do something about it so that you can create a more uh, successful communication interaction um, with that person. All right. Okay. That's our lesson today for word stress. Super important, really need to make sure that we're tuning our ear to how word stress works. So now that you've gotten these rules, now that you've had some examples, now that you've kind of get a, gotten a taste to this, you'll start noticing it other places. You'll start noticing, oh, they stress it this way. And you know, oh, I can hear the stress in these words. So try and play around with that a little bit. Listen to listen to native speakers and and you know identify words. A lot of the multisyllabic words are maybe easier to pull out of a passage. Maybe there's a new vocabulary word or whatever. You're going to want to look up the word stress. So there'll be a little dash next to the syllable that has that word stress and so you know you can know for sure. Okay? All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're not already a member at Pronunciation Pro, come join us. What are you waiting for? We have packages that range from kind of online study and group training to really customized one-on-one -on -one packages. So the one-on-one -on -one packages, I tend to meet with our clients before, like kind of those potential students. Our potential students, I like to meet with you before we you jump into the private training. And so if you're interested in private training, we'll give you some information of how to link to our private training application. And that is that is just for us to get a feel for are you ready for private training? Are you in the right spot for what our you know our trainers um, need you to be in? And because there is a kind of a prime spot of when private lessons are really needed. First of all, if it's like you're in a hurry and you need to make progress faster, private training is gonna be the best option. And if you need that accountability and follow through, that's a good option. But I am taking intermediate to advanced level English speakers. Okay, so if you're, you're really functioning, you're working, you, you know, are going to school or something in English, and you need that those results fast, then those private trainings really are the best option. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And we will see you again soon. Okay. Bye. Pronunciation. 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 Pronunciation.